one chance is uh, a local coinage for robberies armed robberies and other kind of uh, illicit activities and sometimes violent crimes that are perpetrated by criminals who disguise themselves as operators of commercial vehicles. In most cases, these criminals pick up passengers from either authorized or unauthorized bus stops. And then midway into their trip, attack these passengers, dispossessing them of, of their valuables. One of the key features or key characteristics of the crime of one chance is the fact that they are usually opportunistic crimes. The victims are randomly picked. The victims are randomly attacked. It can happen at any time. It could be in the morning, the very early hours. It could be in the afternoon. It could be at night. But in most cases, these crimes take place in the very early hours in the morning which are traditionally described as rush hours and also later in the evenings when people are returning home from work. Our experience as police officers, particularly in places in cities like Lagos and Abuja, is that sometimes the perpetrators of these crimes equally carefully select their routes. In most cases, these criminals actually carefully select their routes. They usually love to operate in areas where commuters are mostly traders and people who engage in buying and selling. People that want to move around with a lot of cash or significant amount of money either while going to, to buy new stocks or when returning home from the market after making sales. But they don't also, it, it, they, these criminals don't look out for only cash. They steal all kinds of valuables from mobile phones to jewelry and to all kind of items that they can easily trade for cash. But the most worrisome part of it is that they can also be very callous. And when they are faced with resistance, or when they are trying to flee, or when they are trying to cover their crimes, or when they are trying to hurry out of the scene of crimes, they can also inflict serious and sometimes fatal injuries on their victims. Sometimes they are armed with weapons, guns, Machets, daggers, and slings. And sometimes they also operate with local spray. And sometimes they use dry pepper and other kind of hazardous circumstances that they could spray into your eyes and make it difficult for you to actually either recognize them resist them or engage them in any kind of survival combat.
But in spite of all this, citizens can still take some precautionary measures to protect themselves from falling victims to this kind of criminals. There are basic clues we expect citizens to look out for and basic security tips that citizens can observe and the observance of these security tips can actually minimize their chances of falling victims to these kind of criminals. Number one, we advise citizens to be mindful of the kind of vehicles they board. We advise if you don't have your own private car and you can't afford to take a full charter or patronize Uber or Taxify services, we advise that any time you want to take a commercial cab or a commercial bus or a commercial vehicle, do so from recognized taxi parks or recognized um, bus parks or recognized bus stops. Secondly, we also advise that you use painted taxis. That's taxis that are painted in commercial colors, buses that are painted in commercial colors. Thirdly, we also advise that you avoid vehicles plying the roads without their registration numbers being fitted on them. Sometimes these criminals are also clever by half. They have the front of the vehicle fitted with the registration numbers and they deliberately take off the registration numbers at the back of the vehicle. The reasons are obvious. When they are approaching you, you could visibly see the registration numbers. But the moment you, they, they pick you, rob you, and push you out of the vehicle, if you try to stand up and take photo of the registration number, or copy out the registration number, or try to memorize the registration number, you discover that the, the plate number is blank, meaning that you don't have a, the identity of the vehicle and therefore you clearly will not be able to make a very good case and the police will not be able to um, launch a clear search for the vehicle. So if you have the opportunity of viewing the vehicle and you discover that the, 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 the plate number at the back is not there, that should be a red flag for you. If you also discover that the plate number at the back is mutilated, clearly not visible, or the plate is halfway folded, meaning you could see you could not you won't you won't be able to read the digits then that should also be a red flag for you if you're also trying to board a vehicle and you see an all male passengers that should be a red flag for you if you discover a vehicle where in the front there's a driver and there are two passengers squeezing themselves in the front yet leaving enough space for you to enter at the back that should be a red flag for you because normal nigerians will not have two people squeezing themselves in the front seat with a with a driver when there is clearly vacant seats at the back we also understand that today uh, some of the one chance gangs have become so organized that they don't operate an all-male syndicate or all-male gang. Sometimes it could be 
female members. But traditionally, and in majority of the instances, they are usually they usually consist of all male. So be observant. And for most persons who have in the past been robbed by one chance, they always tell us during the briefing that their instinct told them that something was wrong when they were boarding the vehicle. This might be unscientific and we might not be able to prove this empirically, but we will also advise that it is better to err on the path of caution. Therefore, obey your instinct. If your instinct tells you this car, there's something wrong about this, the passengers in this vehicle, obey your instinct. These are some of the basic tips that we think can help passengers. On our part as police officers, there are still other things that citizens can look out for, which again, for me, are red flags. They, they, they could be suspicion. They could raise your suspicion that something is just not working right. Or for example, for example, when you see a commercial cab with tinted glasses, usually legitimate cab operators don't like to have their vehicles with tinted glasses. So if you see a cab operator with very thick tinted glasses, both front and back and the wood screen all tinted, that should tell you to step back and have a second thought before entering the vehicle. Secondly, if you see, if you're in a vehicle that doesn't ask passengers where they are going to and seems to be going the direction of every other person, and then something should tell you that this person is just interested in mining up the passengers. He's just interested in harvesting as many victims as possible. He's not interested in asking you where you're going. He's not interested in knowing your bus stop. He's not interested in arguing about the fare. He's not interested in discussing whether there is change or no change. Then something will tell you or something should tell you that this guy is just interested in harvesting passengers picking up as many as possible netting them and then robbing them then if you're also entering a car and you're already seated and um, someone is finding a way you, 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 you want to enter a vehicle rather than a person shifting in to enable you sit by the edge because you are the last person boarding the car. The person is rather coming out and urging you to go into the middle of the car. Then that also should be a big red flag. At that point in time, they are perfecting their plan to sandwich you in the middle and make it impossible for you to attempt to open the door, to attempt to raise an alarm. If you are the last person that is boarding a vehicle, and ordinarily your natural position should be the outer part of the seat. Insist on sitting on the outer part of the seat. Or the side not to sit, not to go into the vehicle. They have no right whatsoever to stop, and then it one mean looking guy is stepping out and asking you to go inside him to get into the middle and getting you sandwiched that clearly should be a red flag for you one chance phenomenon can be very difficult because the people or the criminals look like every other citizen 
they, 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 they are in their vehicle and they are driving just like every other person. And so, it can be indeed very difficult to identify them. But in most cases, in areas that are prone to one chance, what we do is to intensify patrols around those areas. One of the things that scares the hell out of them is what we call high visibility policing. The average one chance syndicates, the average one chance gang don't want to apply on roads where there are lots of police patrol teams moving on both directions because part of their modus operandi includes dropping off the victim along the road after robbing them and they don't want to do so on areas where they think or where they suspect that there are a lot of police officers patrolling so one of our approaches is usually deploying a lot of police patrol vehicles on areas that are prone to one chance one chance robberies the second thing we do on such areas is also to carry out what we call snap searches so we look at vehicles particularly when they are not painted in commercial colors and then we we when we look at them and they are all males, we pull over such vehicles and conduct immediate stop and search. In some instances, we've been able to recover weapons, bottle or bottles of powdered pepper mixed with camphor and other kind of chemicals that have usually very painful uh, to the eyes and sometimes have temporal, uh, temporary blinding effects. At other times, we also work with the organized transport sector, the, the, the association, the, the taxi drivers association, the bus drivers association to fish out suspicious and unauthorized uh, drivers operating commercially along those routes but in all we need major governmental interventions to be able to deal with the issue of one chance and deal with them permanently for example in a city like F city once the government can fix the transport system in F City. We'll probably be able to do deal with one chance once and for all. If we have organized transport system with very clean buses plying the roads from one bus stop to another, designated time of departure, designated time of arrival, clean luxurious buses or clean commercial buses some of them fitted with wi-fi some of them fitted with televisions i mean we, we we can afford this if we can have such organized transport system citizens will not have any need to stand on the road and enter commercial cabs that they call along and it will be clearly impossible for one chance operators to take hold of commercial buses that are operated by organized transport transporters and commit such offenses. So at governmental level, we recommend very strongly the need to reorganize our transport system, bring them up to date with with international best practices so that we eliminate the space for these um, undesirable elements to operate. Secondly, we can also take time to ensure that 
our street lights are functioning effectively. Not only do we make sure that the, the, the existing street lights are functioning very well, we, can, we could also take steps to extend the coverage of the street lights to areas that are currently not covered. Experience have clearly shown us that the one chance operators like to operate under the cover of darkness. If our, if our, if our streets are properly littered, we may be able to cut down chances of phone snatchers, one chance criminals, and other kind of petty thieves operating and locking around in the dark corners of our streets by over 80%.